What up, DC Gang? Gang. It's your boy Dreho. And this your girl Cash. Back with some more hood nature. Yes. Make yes. sure you got yes. your pads and pencils, pins, erasers, and everything ready. Because class is in session once again. We about to learn something together. Right. Some of us all are ahead of. Y'all know some people be a little smarter than other people. Right. But we all about to learn. We all in the class. So make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Check out Hood Nature videos. Check out our playlist of Hood Nature as well. And let's learn something. Let's learn So we just found out there's a mind controlling parasite that's affecting hyenas, and it could be affecting you. This parasite causes hyena cubs to act recklessly, and it even makes them get closer to lions than they normally would. And since lions hate hyenas with all the prejudice, hyena cubs affected are much more likely to get mauled to death. Oh. Infected cubs are four times more likely to end up in a lion's blood, and that's all thanks to a parasite called Toxoplasma gondii. If that sounds familiar, it's the same bug that gets mice clapped by cats. What? Toxoplasma gondii? You better look that one up. Tox Why can't it? Look at that. To a parasite called Toxoplasma gondii. Toxoplasma. If that sounds familiar, it's the same bug that gets mice clapped by cats. Because the parasite alters the mouse's brain and basically turns off their fear of cats. The same way it does to a hyena's fear of lions. A mouse that's been infected won't react to the smell of a cat and sometimes it'll even approach a cat. The same way it might cause hyena cubs to walk right up to lions. In both cases, it usually leads to an obituary. A lot of scientists believe this parasite can also affect people and they get us through our cats. Well, more like what the cats leave in their litter box. Many scientists believe that a person infected is more likely to behave recklessly and take more risks. Risks like starting a new business or driving like a menace to society with a suspended license. It can also cause birth defects, so if you're pregnant, don't clean the litter box, let your man's handle it. And just like with hyenas and mice, scientists believe this parasite can lead to an obsession with cats. And since up to half the world can carry it right now, that's probably how cats finesse the bag off humanity. Now that's pussy pal. Yeah, you probably should be afraid of this, because it's the second most homicidal thing in the Antarctica Ocean. First of all, you probably didn't know this murder puppy can grow to 12 feet long and weigh over 1,300 pounds. The leopard seal got its name thanks to his black spider coat and the ability to murk almost anything in the water. Since they're built like rubber submarines, they what eat basically teeth? everything, including fish, squid, and crab. Is that real? The teeth? That? Oh, I think, yeah. Thing right there. Damn. Class. Smirk almost anything in the water. Since they're built like rubber submarines, they eat basically everything including fish, squid, and crabs. But if you watch Happy Feet, you know they save all the disrespect for penguins. They'll actually wait at the ice edge where they know penguins will jump in just so they can turn them into a hashtag. And since the leopard seal can swim 23 miles per hour, almost four times faster than Phelps, they're fast enough to violate basically everything. Sometimes he said four damn. times faster than Phelps. Michael Phelps. <laughs> God damn! It's fast, fast. 23 miles per hour, almost four times faster than Phelps. They're fast enough to violate basically everything. Sometimes they'll launch themselves out the water onto land just to turn a penguin into a happy meal. In a season, one leopard seal can erase hundreds of penguins to the point where they'll start murking them not for food but just for the stats. Oh, and you're not safe either. They have been known to run fades with people, and one actually grabbed a scientist and mauled her underwater until she drowned. They've also been known to bite holes in the inflatable boats people like to sit in. But to be fair, they're not all bad. One leopard seal made friends with a photographer and brought him dead and injured penguins to try to teach him how to hunt. In SEAL society, that's as wholesome as you're gonna get. But that doesn't change the fact that they commit actual war crimes on penguins. If I showed you all the pictures, I would get banned. You know how I said they're the second most dangerous thing in the ice ocean? Yeah, this is why. This bird eats almost nothing but bones. This is a lamigear and it's a scavenger, meaning it eats animals that are already dead. But instead of going for meat like everyone else, this Satan Tweety goes for bone and bone marrow. Since they have stomach acid that will probably make your hands see through, they can swallow entire bones without flinching. But if a bone is too big, the bearded vulture will pick it up, fly up to 500 feet in the air, and then drop it down to the rocks below. If it hits somebody and takes them off the census, that's just a bonus. Since bone marrow is like crack to this bird, they'll drop the same bone from the sky up to 50 times just so they can get a taste. And sometimes the lamigear will violate tortoises by literally air dropping them hundreds of Feet until their shell shatters. According to legend, Greek playwright Aeschylus became a Twitter bio after a vulture airdropped a tortoise from the clouds right onto the back of his head. Oh, okay. double homicide. Also, this flying green reaper isn't a natural redhead. They get that color from rubbing iron oxide rich soil on themselves like war paint. They do it on purpose, we just don't really know why. Also, the biggest ones have a wingspan of more than nine feet. For reference, this guy's is a seven foot three. Moral of this video dinosaurs never left, they've been here the whole fing time. The Argonaut right. octopus has a detachable penis that he'll remove, hand to the female, and then swim away. Hell of a they have a detachable penis that they remove and it has it into a female and then go away. away. What if humans can do that? Well, what if, not saying they can't, they know we can't do that, but what if they can't? Be like, give me a thing, you ain't going nowhere. You ain't going nowhere. <laughs> now you can go out. Right. Okay. Whoa. 
speed. For reference, this guy's is a seven foot three. Moral of this video, dinosaurs never left. They've been here the whole fucking time. The Argonaut octopus has a detachable penis that he'll remove, hand to the female, and then swim away. Hell of an intro, I know. The Argonaut has an extra arm called a hectocodilus, and when a male sees a female, he'll slide his penis arm into a cavity the same way a salesman might slide his business card into your pocket. And with his love arm locked in her, the male can give her the treatment without actually having to be near her. Which is a blessing because the male can be five times shorter and 600 times lighter than his female. That'd be like you being at the club and a guy a foot tall and less than a pound tries shooting his shot. But the female right here does not have time for nonsense. Which is exactly why they do this. Because if he didn't, the she-octopus would try eating him before he finished. Mid-coitus cannibalism is actually really common among octopus. Probably why this man can't pull. The male Argonaut will, in scientific terms, yeet his peat to avoid getting completely eaten by his date. Peat. That's how you know guidelines been on my ass. And the female can actually end up getting knocked up by multiple males, so she'll carry multiple special arms in her cavity. Because of course she does. Moral of this video. Thanks to evolution, the Argonaut hands the female his love hose and then literally tells her to go fuck herself. Also, today's my birthday, so if y'all could like my recent on Instagram, that'd be lovely. I'm trying to win a bet. Appreciate y'all. What's something you'll get a lot of hate for if you say it out? Ducks are constantly evolving to become better sexual predators, and nothing can really stop them. If you value your innocence, just sit this one out and scroll. I'll understand. The rest of you, you've been warned. Ducks are oh. problematic. To the point where if you follow one around for a day, you are going to witness a crime. In fact, the reason this duck is blind is because she got ganged upon by three males and one ripped her eyeballs out. Oh. Great, but aside- What? I thought all- All those ducks out there? Yeah, that we be seeing, they're like, they oh, they look so innocent, innocent, walking around. Walking around with their little- They're some savages. They're so, right, that makes you- Like, damn, I didn't you know ducks- follow around. I want to really follow them around for a while. I might end up getting attacked. You might get okay. attacked. Yeah, they attack now. I'm gonna have one hiss at me. Yeah. At my job, yeah. You got a lot of baby or something? You got a lot of baby in this. I'm like, what? I look down and say, oh, shit. Mm -mm. <laughs> The reason this duck is blind is because she got ganged upon by three males and one ripped her eyeballs out. Great for the silent G is so common that female ducks have evolved maze-like genitalia with dead ends. So even if she does get violated, there's a 90% chance she won't get stuck with a family she didn't want. But because of this, male ducks evolved the corkscrew phallus and its only purpose is to get through the Vegeta maze and get her pregnant anyway. And after thousands of years of the worst character development nature's ever seen, now some male ducks have curly fries that can be more than 15 inches long. The Argentina lake duck is the worst possible version of this because their meat screw can be over 17 inches long and they use it to literally lasso females trying to escape. Really wish I didn't know oh, that. Oh, you ain't going nowhere. You about to get this. You are. <laughs> you ain't running 17 feet. Right. I'm gonna let you go ahead and go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you got that in. Got it. Damn. That's crazy. And if you're wondering where the ducks hide it all, please don't. Every duck you see is in an arms race to either Weinstein or try not to get Weinstein. When autocorrect changes to what the duck, it's because they know what they're doing. What is a fact or statistic that seems fake but is real? So like falcons, right? Out of all the raptors like eagles, hawks, and owls, falcon claws are actually smaller and weaker than the others. So instead of grabbing their prey with their talons and murking them that way, falcons like the peregrine will start high up in the air and drop down. I swear this is going to make sense soon enough. So they turn themselves into missiles that can max out at 240 miles per hour. That's almost 9 Usain Bolts. This falcon deratio will target this victim, but because its claws are weaker than the other raptors, instead they'll ball up their feet, basically making a fist and hitting their prey so hard it folds their spine. So yeah, falcon punch is a real ass thing, and it is devastating. Oh, wow. Hold up. Devastating. Look how crazy it looked though, like. Yeah. Look. You didn't even see it. I didn't, I didn't see it. It is right. devastating. That's the one. Damn. Me come back. It's too fast. It, yeah. Oh, I see it. Yeah. Should have ducked, bro. Yeah, whoever designed this frog was a straight up menace. It takes a real threat to society to make a frog smaller than a quarter, but allegedly toxic enough to put an elephant in a casket. This tiny frog is poisonous enough to erase 10 grown men. Because when a dark frog gets pressed, it sweats out a poison from its back called batrachotoxin. If the smallest amount gets in your blood, best case you'll be paralyzed, worst case you'll get your own section in its back called batrachotoxin. If the smallest amount gets in your blood, best case you'll be paralyzed, worst case you'll get your own section in a newspaper. The amount of poison it will take to turn a 150 pound person into a hashtag is 100 micrograms. That's like two grains of table salt. Nature really had no business 
elephants going this hard on a frog? There's no elephants in the Amazon. Right. And even if there were, it's not like elephants eat frogs. No yet chance. this Crippin Kermit could put Dumbo in the dirt. Now that's a violation. Got their name because native Indian tribes would rub their arrow tips with the poison and use them to either hunt or lower the enemy's senses. And you know what? The poison isn't even theirs. Because these frogs steal toxins from the ants and insects they eat. Eating their biggest flex doesn't even belong to them. They're not the only ones either. And those gang colors are the one predators that any meal with them is always going to be the last supper. The most toxic of them all is the golden poison frog, which can murk 10 to 20 men and about 20,000 mice. You see what I mean when I say there's no reason for that? Since the poison blocks nerve impulses, it can lead to heart failure. They're so ridiculous that the only thing that can eat them is one type of snake. Anything else gets put in an ashtray. There's a lot of toxic oh, bastards in the world, and vermin right here is right at the top. Just a friendly reminder that this isn't Photoshop. Sea lions are big as oh, fuck. Not like out of pocket type big. The biggest of all is a stellar sea lion, which can violate the scales at about 2,500 pounds. Built like a washing machine with flippers, only two things can check them jaws and a freed willy. Everything else is a victim because that's what they eat everything else. Stellars eat all types of fish, squid, and octopus, but they'll also add seagulls, fur seals, and baby sea otters to the list. And even though we call them sea lions, if you really want to be a nerd about it, and you know me, I do, the pinniped group that they're part of is actually closer to bears, meaning this guy's closer to being a sea grizzly than a sea simba. And since they're- oh, It do look like a sea grizzly, look. They're part of is actually closer to bears, meaning this guy- That don't oh, look like a bear? Yeah. And, look, and they got like a dog face, like, on the side. Yeah, that's the real size? Yeah. That's crazy closer to being a sea grizzly than a sea simba. And since they're basically breast stroking water bears, they have a similar jaw structure, which is why social distancing from a sea lion might be good for your health. Because yeah. at 12 feet, 2,000 pounds, a motivated stellar sea lion can and will bite clear through your armor. And since they eat seafood without ever seeing floss, you would 100% get an infection. They've been known to turn their own children into chalk outlines just so they can mate with their mother. They barely give a f about their own kind. What makes you think they won't violate you? Oh. Moral of this video? Yeah, that's their boat now. You ever- They do that to their kids so they can mate with, with their mother. They old kids. So what does that got to do? So with meeting with the mother. All right, you probably have under your mama so much you can go ahead and get out of the way because I got to get me. <laughs> That's crazy. Now, what makes you think they won't violate you? Moral of this video? Yeah, that's their boat now. You ever just sit and wonder just what sloths are? Oh, Even right. if you didn't, I'm still making the video. Sloths are members of one of the weirdest families I've ever seen called Xanartha. And that family reunion includes sloths, anteaters, and armadillos. And one of the main things they oh, have in common right. are those massive claws. Armadillos use them to dig for food. Anteaters use them to dig graves for jaguars. That wasn't even a joke. They've put jaguars in coffins. And sloths use them to hang from trees because that's the best they can do. Now the family they're in, Zanartha, they're most related to the Afrotear family. And their cookout includes aardvarks, elephants, shrews, and manatees. And no, I don't get it either. Which means outside its own family, this crawling carpet's closest cousins are Dumbo and the Sea Potato. Once upon a time, sloths used to be as big as elephants. And Megatherium was brawlic enough to hand out fates to anyone who wanted oh, it. imagine a sloth that used to be as big they as elephants. elephants. God. Ow. That must be some prehistoric type stuff. I don't know. It didn't look like they just, be. like you said, just lay around, sleep, sleep. be lazy. And they say they, they stay from up on the um, thing because they move so slow. So yeah. that's why they always... So how the hell do they, they be say, clapping stuff? I remember the last video, remember he said, see, when they, um, they baby fall, they just let them go. Because by the time they get done, it's like done for them. But then he did not recently say that they clap some jaguars or something? Jaguars, yeah. So they that slow, how they get to clapping? I don't know. Somebody let me know, how do they clap jaguars? Break it down to me. And they said ant eaters clap them too, I think. Jerry was Let awesome. me know, man. Help me out, y'all. Time sloths used to be as big as elephants, and Megatherium was brawlic enough to hand out fates to anyone who wanted it. But after years of terrible character development, they got demoted to a moss blanket with a face. So to answer the question that absolutely nobody asked, a sloth is just an unemployed tree armadillo and a hippie ant. Animals that you might think are good pets, but are actually pure hell. Owning a sugar glider is like adopting an ice sculpture in August. They're just as durable and they last just as long. They're ridiculously sensitive, high maintenance, and they find some of the most creative ways to die. They glide into walls, they choke to death on raisins, and if they're stressed in any way, they'll hand a baker themselves. They can get clapped by a disease you never even heard of and on top of all that they fight unless you're a professional adopting a sugar glider just putting heartbreak on layaway two cans are terrible pets and before you say it everything i'm about to tell you two piece owner told me two cans are needy they scream and they bite whenever they don't get their way or when they just feel like it since their beak is serrated this is what they can do to you they're highly aggressive hormonal assholes that can't be trusted with children or other people she deserved it why would you come, come on man that big beak oh man you just let me just you think it's and then come on snap her lips this is what they can do to you. They're highly aggressive hormonal assholes that can't be trusted with children or other people. Also, they shoot 40 to 50 times a day, not the white yogurt pigeon stuff either. Oh. They'll have your house looking like a paintball bunker. Oh. And I don't know what this is, 
but I hate it. There's a lot of other things, but long story short, unless you're professional, which Tuki's mom is, adopting a toucan is inviting Satan and Featherface into your home. Yeah. And last are foxes because they are the worst roommates. They scream at 3 a.m. and they pee all over the place. Now, forgive that if the smell didn't stick to you for weeks. It'll put your social life on life support if it doesn't just kill it completely. That was a good, that was good. good class right there. It's like that bird that flying down like a missile at 200 miles an hour. I'm like, it's so fast. I didn't even see it hit the duck. Me neither. The duck didn't even know what hit it. <laughs> no, it didn't. And the that duck. That flapping ain't even know. I never knew that about the duck, yo. You ain't getting away from me. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. One 17 on feet. Right. That's, that's, that's long. Yeah. You ain't going nowhere. I'll let you go ahead and shit. You're gonna feel some mmm. <laughs> you might be watching this, y'all already know. But get down in the comment section, y'all. Y'all know how we do. Mm -hmm. Neighborhood nature, we get out there and talk about what's going on and educate each other. Right. Get down there and help us out, y'all. Help each other out too. Make sure y'all smash a like on this video. Also smash a like on Hood Nature video. Go ahead and show them, smash a like on it too. Subscribe to the game, cut on the post notification. You guys stay warm. Bring it Y'all sure already know who I be by now, yo. Go by the name Drell. And I go by the name Cash. We'll catch y'all next one. Catch y'all next one.